Hello. In this video, we are going to compute the commutator for the Hamiltonian operator in one dimension and the position x. This commutator involves two operators, the first of which is the Hamiltonian, which is this h with a hat on top, which can be thought of as the sum of two other operators, the first of which is t, the kinetic energy operator, and then often a v, a potential energy operator. The position in the x direction is governed by the x operator, which we denote as x with a hat on top. The kinetic energy operator T can be performed as the operation minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x so long as we're in one dimension. The x operator can be very simply uh, undertaken by multiplying from the left by x. We write the commutator of the Hamiltonian x inside these brackets and then we use a property of the commutator, a commutator identity. Since we know that h is equal to t plus v, we can write this commutator as the commutator of t with x plus the commutator of v with x. The advantage of this representation is that the potential always commutes with the x position, so therefore this commutator is zero. We have therefore simplified the problem of finding the commutator of the Hamiltonian and x to the problem of finding the commutator of the kinetic energy operator t and x. By the definition of the commutator, the commutator of t and x is tx minus xt. To make our future computations uh, clearer, we can have these operators act on a dummy function, which we'll write on the right hand side. The problem now becomes tx on psi, our dummy function, minus xt psi. And we're going to use a property of operators that we use operators from right to left. So the first operator to act here is going to be x. The first operator to act here is going to be t. And now we have written this formally at the top of the board just to show uh, the order of operations. And now in the next step, we're actually going to have the x operator act on psi and have the t operator act on psi. We get the following result after we let the operators act. Notice here, it looks like we've just written down exactly what we had before, but notice now we don't have a hat. So now we've converted from an operator to a simple multiplication by a variable. So now we have the operator t acting on this particular quantity xi. And over here, what we had inside the parentheses was the kinetic energy operator acting on the function psi. And we replaced it by its definition, which is minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x. So we've taken the second derivative of psi with respect to x here. And then we still have out in front, we have the action of the operator x on the quantities inside the parentheses. In the third line, we now formally write out what happens when the leftmost operator acts. So here we have minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x, but of this quantity, x times psi. And then here we replace the position operator x by its definition, which is simply multiplication by x. And now this is going to multiply through the quantity on the right-hand side. In the next step, we will do some simplifications. On the right-hand side, we make use of the fact that minus times minus gives us plus, and that the variable x and this particular constant, h bar squared over 2m, they commute, so I can shift the order of x. And by convenience, I'm just going to put it to the left of the uh, derivative, so we're not confused uh, that is just simply multiplying by the left. On the left-hand side here, I just written down what we had before, and we want to emphasize the fact that now we have to take a second derivative with respect to x 
of a product of two functions. We know x is definitely a function of x. And we always want to assume that our dummy function is a function of all possible variables for convenience. So now we have two functions of x that are multiplied by each other. So now we have to apply the product rule. We have simply copied down the rightmost term. And on the left-hand side, the one change we made is to make use of the fact that the second derivative is the first derivative of the first derivative. So we've been careful to write this as a series of first derivatives. And now we are going to apply the fact that even as a first derivative, this particular quantity here is the product of two functions of x. So therefore, we have to use the product rule for differentiation. So we recall the rule for the differentiation of products. That's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So the first function being x, the second function being psi. So we have the first times the derivative of the second, so that's d psi dx, plus the second psi times the derivative of the first, which is dx dx. And we recognize that dx dx is identically equal to 1, so we're going to simplify that in the next step. This reduces the problem to the commutator being minus h bar squared over 2m. Now we have it down to the first derivative of x times the first derivative of psi with respect to x plus psi. And then we remain here plus h bar squared over 2m times x times the second derivative of psi with respect to x. So again, we notice that x times the first derivative of psi with respect to x, this is a function of x, and this is a function of x as well. And these are a product, so again, we're going to have to apply the product rule, and then use the fact that we have a linear combination of two functions, and that the differential operator is a linear function. Applying the product rule to this x times the first derivative of psi with respect to x, first times the derivative of the second, is now going to be the second derivative of psi with respect to x, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And we've left out the fact here that we have dx over dx is equal to 1, so we've implied that. And then finally, I have the operator on this psi here, which is also going to be d psi dx. This term, again, is unchanged. And we notice that we have uh, the first derivative with respect of psi with respect to x twice here, so we can combine these. Next, we notice that we have an h bar squared over 2m, x times the second derivative of psi with respect to x. And we have a minus h bar squared over 2m, x times the second derivative of psi with respect to x. So this term here and this term can now be canceled. We notice that terms that aren't canceled is this rightmost term here, which is still multiplied by the factor here. So that gives us minus h bar, bar squared over 2m times 2 times the first derivative of psi with respect to x. We notice that a factor of 2 will cancel here. So we're left with the commutator being minus h bar squared over m times the first derivative of psi with respect to x. Now we can rewrite our expression minus h bar squared over m as h bar over i times m times h bar over i times the first derivative of psi with respect to x. And notice that if we multiply these together, we get h bar squared. i times i is minus 1, so that gives us some minus there. And then we still have the m in the denominator. So this is a correct uh, decomposition of the term that we have in the first line. And now we finally recognize that there is a significance to this particular term. This is simply the momentum in the x direction. So we get the commutator of the Hamiltonian in one dimension with the x direction is equal to h bar over i times m times the momentum in the x direction. I thank you very much for your attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.